So let's talk about this meeting that you have <laughs> with Jeremy Corbyn a little bit later on. As Kate says, you're looking for assurances over the backstop. What, what exactly are you after? Well, I suppose this is just the latest in a, in a series of meetings that we have had, I mean, all across Europe, <clears throat> in the United States, and, of course, here in Britain, on the issue of Brexit. Brexit, of course, is, in the first instance, a matter for Britain. Uh, but, of course, it does have huge consequences for the whole continent and it has very, very particular consequences for the island of Ireland. The, our island, as you know, is partitioned since 1921, mm -hmm. was part of the colonial British retreat strategy. It's been a disaster. It's caused conflict. We came out of that collectively. All of us built the Good Friday Agreement and a peace process that's now very robust. But Brexit threatens to sunder all of that. And our point is very simple. We're not here to interfere in the democratic decisions of others. That would be entirely wrong. That's not our business. What is our business is to protect Ireland, to protect our economic stability, our social stability, and crucially, as neighbouring islands and friends, mm. to protect our peace. So I've discussed these matters before with Jeremy Corbyn, who I'm meeting today. Jeremy knows and understands Ireland very well. Um, and yes, we're looking for assurances. Sadly, we didn't get those uh, from Mrs May when so we met her last week. So what did you specifically week. want from Theresa May that you didn't get? Well, Theresa May, we, we have had now a long series of meetings with Mrs May and with the British government throughout this Brexit debacle. And at no stage were we ever assured of their complete understanding of the consequences of Brexit beyond the shores of Britain. And certainly they demonstrated what I thought was a, an absolute disregard for Ireland and Irish interests. Before Christmas, Mrs May uh, landed on a position where she understood that the withdrawal agreement that she had negotiated, along with what's called the Irish backstop, mm. and these are just really mm. specific provisions to make sure the trade mm. can still function on our island, to ensure that our institutions can yeah. still function, right. that people can still live their lives. She understood before Christmas the good sense and the necessity for these measures. And now, as we speak this morning, she has put all of that through the shredder. In our view, she has the acted problem, in though, absolute bad faith. I mean, one of the problems from her perspective, because if she didn't understand the consequences and the effect of a potential Irish hard border before, she certainly does now, doesn't she? And um, one of the problems is, is that um, you might have got reassurance by the Irish backstop and having that border in the Irish Sea. But, of course, the other side of politics in Northern Ireland doesn't feel happy with that at all. So she can't give reassurances because, at the very least, she needs those DUP votes. Now, you have seven votes, mm -hmm. don't you? Um, Sinn Féin has never taken them up. Correct. Why would you not, if you cared so passionately, at this crucial moment for Ireland, come and take them up and influence the process? Well, well let me just deal with, first of all, Mrs May and the assurances. We are insisting that the British state and the British government honour their obligations in international law. I'm not looking for a pat on the head. I'm not looking for somebody to hold our hands. No, of course. These are very high-stake matters, and I think it would be utterly, utterly reckless uh, for anybody uh, as British Prime Minister to knowingly and cynically destabilise peace in Ireland. Mm. I think that would be crazy. You Actually, asked about Westminster. Yeah. Can, can, let me just make this clear. I'm an Irish woman. Mm -hmm. I'm elected to the Parliament in Dublin. Mm. Our, <clears throat> our island is partitioned at the moment. That has led to all sorts of political conflict and physical conflict, mm. and we all bear the scars uh, of that. Uh, our aspiration is for a united Ireland, a free Ireland, a Parliament where we discuss, debate and decide our future and our destiny ourselves, for ourselves. We have no business in your parliament. We have no business in Westminster. I know, but you have Westminster. comment now, don't you? Because what's happened is that problem has come back, hasn't it? And you would like to see Theresa May take a position, but you're not joining the process that could have that well, influence. Well, I, I think, in fairness, I've set out to, to, mm. that we are, in fact, because bear in mind... This process is a negotiation between Britain mm. and between the European Union. And, of course, Ireland is a member of, of the European Union. Let me also say this. Uh, I mean, I've watched the sometimes very strange and exotic antics uh, at Westminster mm. throughout this whole uh, Brexit process. And I am not convinced at all, and you will not convince me, 
uh, that by being present and in the middle of that melee that we would be well positioned to protect Irish interests. I don't accept that. And I would point to the experience of Scotland. We see that. Yeah, where, no, where they the have been, abs in my view, as an observer, mm. utterly disregarded. To my mind, this debate has been about England in the first instance, which is fair enough, about English interests, which is also fair enough. But we, as Irish people, reserve the right to advance our interests, those, our national but, and but our the, democratic but the, interests. But the SNP uh, <coughs> members of parliament would argue that at least they are there in the debate, in the debating chamber, trying to push their cause and their case. The, the majority of Northern Ireland wanted to remain. That was Absolutely, the reality. Yeah. Mm. And of course, you had the power, or you do have the power, to sit in parliament and, and at, lend those seven votes to a sort of the remain see, side of the argument, uh, but, if but it, you're not doing it, and so no, that no, no, and you, the, so the frustration, or the, I imagine that the, the, the strange thing from our perspective, mm. sitting this side, is is that you can comment and, and suggest it wouldn't make any difference, or you don't want to be part of that debacle, but then sitting on the outside and saying we want this to happen, that to happen, but actually you're not going and, and, but, and but having first your say of all, there. first of all, and of course it looks strange because you're because you're not you're not me and sure. you're not Irish, so of course so trying I get to understand, that this is strange. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. But, but, but firstly, we're not on the outside. We have been very much involved in the Brexit process. This isn't just something that's debated at Westminster. Um, mm. And secondly, to, to be truthful with you, I would not expect that the Parliament of Westminster would have as its driving concern Irish interests. It protects what no. it regards as British interests. And in this scenario, as with so many others, Irish and British interests are different. Have you been okay, closer God. this time round, Mary Lou, than ever to... Have you been closer, do you think, during this debate than ever to taking those seven seats? Has there been discussions amongst Sinn Féin to say, do you know, if, if no, we no, ever do I mean, were to take these seats, no, no, it's I mean, kind of now... Sinn Féin MPs there. are elected on the basis of not taking their seats. In fact, the first woman ever elected to the Westminster Parliament was a Sinn Féin woman a century ago, and she didn't take her seat. No. At the core of Sinn Féin, though, is the drive for United Ireland, isn't it? Yes. And so there is always going to be suspicion, someone like Theresa May, from many other politicians, possibly from Jeremy Corbyn too, that really it would suit you rather well if the whole thing collapsed and you were therefore allowed to have some kind of vote on a united island? Well, I think we're heading in that direction in any event. Bear in mind the provision for a referendum on Irish unity is part and parcel of the Good Friday Agreement. Mm. The border in Ireland is not a natural geographic feature. It's political, it's contested, and we now have the democratic means to mediate that, to mitigate that, and to give people their say, ultimately, to decide, does it stay mm. or, or so you'd like does that. it go? Of course I would mm. like that. I think it's the correct thing. I think partition of, of Ireland was a disaster and wrong. Brexit is not an Irish phenomenon. We mm. didn't ask for it. The North, as you say, voted to remain. Mm. And the real core of our problem is this. Despite the fact that the North of Ireland voted to remain, others can decide otherwise mm. and can actually attempt to coerce the north of Ireland out of the European Union. And that's democratically wrong. If the people, if we value democracy and the people speak and they say, mm. this, is, this is our decided view, how is it then that anybody at Westminster should have that prerogative to say, well, no, we know better. Irish people know best for Ireland, just as English people know best for England and so on. But Surely Northern Ireland being part core. of Britain, and of course, that's the democratic process there, it was Britain that voted to leave. I mean, that's, that's, we, that's, we that's, that's and, the argument and look, all the we way, could, we could argue yes, that forever, absolutely. and I'm never going to agree with that. And, and increasingly, people... But that is the democratic process you're talking but, about, isn't it? But, well, well, the democratic process is this, is that we have an agreement that, that puts a premium on the concept of consent, that the people must consent to the political circumstances in which mm. they live, and surely to goodness, having voted to remain, and then an, an insistence by a British Tory government that you exit, uh, how, do, how do you square that with the principle of consent? These are the contradictions that we live with mm. and the anomalies and the strangeness sometimes yes. of Irish politics because mm. our island is partitioned. Mm. But it won't be like that forever. Mm. That's the good news. You have to leave it there, I'm afraid. Uh, we talk a lot about division, we're talking about Brexit, but you probably know more about the, the problems that can cause than, than anyone else. Absolutely, and the, yeah. the core thing is that at the end of the day, everybody has to get on with it. We all have to be fair to each other yeah. as well. Heard a lot about okay. Project Fear. Let's move on to Project Fair. <laughs>